With the rise of Web3 and the emergence of NFTs, luxury brands have a unique opportunity to create new and exciting experiences for their customers. In this episode of What the Lux, we will dive deep into the role of NFTs and Web3 for luxury brands. We'll be exploring the ways in which these technologies can transform the industry and create new opportunities for growth and innovation. You're watching What the Lux, the show that analyzes the latest trends in digital luxury and highlights the campaigns and strategies that will make you think, what the lux? I'm David Kingbell, and thanks for watching. Today, we have a special guest with us, an entrepreneur who's been at the forefront of the NFT revolution and the web free space. Nicolas Lejeune is a former Google and YouTube employee who's now the CEO and co-founder of Courtyard.io, an NFT startup that went through the Y Combinator and raised $7 million recently. Hi, Nico, and welcome to What the Lux. How are you doing? Hi, David. Thanks for, thanks for having me. It's great to, great to be here. Great to see you as well. So I'm happy to have you today for multiple reasons. First, because we work together. So disclaimer for everybody. I worked at Courtyard with Nicolas every day. But also because I think that you have a very interesting vision and you know where Web3 is going and what luxury brands could do with Web3. So first question, I'd like to know what is your vision about NFT overall? Why did you decide to launch Courtyard? And by the way, what is Courtyard? Uh, when NFT like boom and it started, I really saw NFTs as a way to prove ownership of something uh, in the digital space. So at any point in time, if you own an NFT, I can at any point in time say, who owns that NFT, it's your wallet, you are the owner of that asset. And so I directly saw the link with the ownership of physical assets. And uh, the reason why we launched Courtyard is, was to create this centralized entity that would hold and store physical assets and create NFTs of those assets. And so the, the whole concept of it is if you have an entity that's stored and secure in vaults, physical assets and you issue nfts you can trade those nfts anywhere in the world within seconds and use the the, the beauty of like the blockchain um but at the same time you would be able to redeem the physical asset in exchange for the nft so you could burn the nft and redeem the physical asset and so you would have that centralized entity who's essentially storing assets and providing physically backed nfts which uh, we're going to talk about it. We, we're trying to like trying to push the narrative to call those connected collectible, similar to digital collectible, and really be like at the forefront of creating this link between physical and digital, and a really easy on ramp from physical asset to turn them into a digital asset that you can redeem back to a physical asset if you want to. So that's yeah, so that's it, the whole purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what what I really like about Courtyard is really that you are, you know, at the center of this trend of bringing together physical and digital. And we know uh, and it will be like music to the ears of luxury brands and you know executives of luxury brands that are listening to us today. More specifically, you know, for those uh, executives at luxury brands, you know, they there's a lot of things that they could do with Web3. There's a lot of use cases. So uh, based on your experience, what is the number one uh, use case of NFTs and maybe also of Courtier's technology that is the most relevant for the luxury industry, according to you? I think it's definitely the the secondhand market. Uh, I, I mean, I have a great example. I'm a, I'm a huge watch uh, collector. Uh, I love collecting watches. And there was this specific watch that was really in high demand. Impossible to get that watch. You need to be on wait list for, for like several years to get it. And so the only reason for me to get that watch was to actually buy it on the second hand. So I had to go to uh, Chrono24 to find that watch and buy that watch. Similar to like the sneaker industry, there is like other companies like StockX and a lot of industry who build themselves on top of it to provide authentication um, and provide a way for buying in the second hand. But what I realized is that brand has no clue that I'm a customer of that brand, even if even though I'm a big lover of that brand and I actually spend quite a bit of money to buy an asset from that brand. So they have no data regarding me as a customer. I'm not even 100% certain that that watch has been authenticated in the proper way because who is the best person to authenticate the assets of that? Um, like the, the watch itself, it's the watch company itself, right? And so right now there is this big disconnect where those companies are literally eating the lunch 
of luxury brands on the secondhand market, right? Um, and so I think the biggest opportunity would be to have an infrastructure like Courtyard, for instance, who would be able to provide the safe infrastructure for storing and insuring those assets and create a 3D model representation of those assets as NFT. So I, I'm dreaming of the time where I could simply take my watch, go to one of the location because that specific brand has stores in every single, every single big city uh, in the US and in the world. Uh, I could just drop it there. They would authenticate, provide potentially uh, a grading uh, saying like this watch is in this condition and send it to the vault itself. We would create an NFT, and so that NFT could be traded. And at every transaction of that NFT, the brand will make royalties of all those transactions. So it's kind of like cutting um, cutting the, the the grass out of uh, those luxury uh, secondhand marketplaces. Right. And it's, I think you know, listening to you, there is also a huge opportunity for luxury brands. Now we know that the secondhand business is a huge business for luxury. People are you know, buying pre-loved clothes and fashion, as well as watches and, and jewelry and so on and so forth. But here, it seems like there's also a way that by using Web3, luxury brands could, on top of the business, they could also uh, get information about those uh, secondhand luxury buyers. Maybe they can build a relationship with them. Uh, and we know how important it is for luxury to, to know things about their customer to do good CRM uh, and also to keep a link even after the purchase with some of their VIP uh, clients. And the thing is that maybe without Web3 as of today, perhaps they know nothing about them. As you said, someone who buys you know, a secondhand Rolex, Rolex doesn't know anything about them. Whereas maybe if we bring some, uh, some technologies to the brand, they could have like an occasion, an opportunity to connect with them. And so in your opinion, why is Web3 the right technology to do that? And why is there specifically an opportunity for luxury brands to leverage Web3 for their secondhand product strategies? Definitely. Um, great question. I think Web3, the, the, the key advantage of Web3 is that everything is interoperable, which means that if you have that NFT of this watch or this bag or whatever type of luxury asset you would have, you can use a lot of different application that other company have built. And simply it's one of the building blocks. You can use your NFT in another application. A great example is Instagram. Um, for, for the people listening, I don't know if you've seen the new feature that Instagram released, which is you can actually post your NFTs as approved NFT that you own that NFT. And so just that ability, I can flex my collection on in the digital space, right? Uh, and there will be more and more application that will start to be built on top of it. And the fact that I can, I'm not locked into one ecosystem, I can sell my NFT in this marketplace or this other marketplace and potentially soon on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I know for, for a fact that like they have been exploring, like potentially allowing for those, those type of trades. So that's the first, first one is really interoperability. The second one is, um, the ability to see every single transaction and interact directly with the users. It's not possible today to simply give, give a gift to your customer, um, directly dropping something in their wallet, which is possible in Web3. And we've seen a lot of different applications there. So the ability to see all those data uh, and know who your customers are and what are the type of assets they own and so on, because everything is public, everything is on chain, right? Um, I think those are like the two main two main elements, and then finally okay. the uh, so, sorry, but like the, finally the, the the last piece is your digital identity. I think we're getting more and more online, and you want to be able to express yourself and your digital identity online as we spend more time um, spending like on on those different applications, right? And so, owning an NFT, you can truly own something digital and prove that you own that in the digital space and express yourself this way. Similar that you would wear a luxury bag on the street is to express yourself and who you are. And you want to be able to do that in the field, uh, in the digital space as well. Right. So that's true that there are a lot of features of Web3 that, makes, uh, that make a lot of sense for luxury brands. As you said, interoperability. So the, the possibility to bring your data and your uh, assets from one, uh, you know, program to another, from one brand to another, and make them work together well, for instance, on Instagram, on Twitter, and so on and so forth. 
this transparency on the data and the fact that brands can keep a link with an object that they've sold or a consumer even after the uh, the purchase via uh, by following the transaction and via the transparency of the of the blockchain so it's, it sounds like it uh, it makes a lot of sense of course there are a lot of challenges also to um, to face when you're a luxury brand and you want to leverage Web3 to launch a secondhand uh, luxury program. So can you walk, walk us through, you know, let's say, imagine you're a luxury brand, let's say a watch brand, for instance, or a handbag brand. How would you, how would you go and create a Web3 powered secondhand program? How, how would this look like for a luxury brand? There's, there's really two components, right? You have the physical operational components and like the digital component, right? Um, in terms of the, the physical component, we believe that it's all about trust. You need to be like trust and compliance. So you need to have everything set up in a way that consumer would know that their asset that they own is safely stored somewhere and they can get it whenever they want. And it's an easy process to, to get it. This is really where we've been focusing on at Courtyard, which is we partner with a company called Brinks, uh, B-R-I-N-K-S, which is the number one company, if you're familiar uh, and you've ever seen an armor truck on the street, that's Brinks. Um, so we partner with them and they also invested in us to really provide that secure vaulting infrastructure and the ability to redeem an asset. Like if I own an NFT and I live in Japan, I should be able to receive my asset in exchange for my NFT whenever I want. Um, so all of that piece, we figured it out in, in that sense. So it would be as easy. And we we literally, actually yesterday, I uh, got a pickup for $1.1 million of a collectible uh, with an armor truck. It's as easy as we would send as the brand to either send the physical assets to a vault in the same country that they're in. Um, we provide all the 3D modeling of those assets in advance um, and we will have like approved assets. So it would be as simple as you give your asset into one of the branches of that specific brand. They send it to uh, make sure it's an authenticated asset and potentially give like the condition. And then it's simply sending to the vault and then we would issue like an NFT uh, on behalf of the holders. And so we, we could have a program uh, that that's being set up this way. Then once you have the NFT, the, the beauty, as I mentioned before, the beauty of the blockchain is like you can either, and we have ways to create uh, easily create a marketplace for those NFTs specific to the brand, but you could also just simply leverage other NFT marketplaces, such as, for instance, OpenSea, which also is also one of our uh, one of our investor. Um, you can leverage other types of marketplace and suddenly have automatically all those assets being traded on those different marketplace. The advantage of the NFT is that you can code inside the NFT that regardless of wherever that asset is being traded on, so regardless of the marketplace, even if it would be on Instagram in the future, you would make a royalties from those transactions. So let's say you have a watch, it's been like turned into an NFT and that person decides to sell it on uh, NFT marketplace. Regardless, you will make, and you can set the royalties. It's been ranging from like 2.5% to up to 10% on average for, they call it creator royalties. Um, you will make that royalties um, as a brand which means you can capture the whole market of assets that you've sold for the last 20, 50 years. All of those assets that are here keep their value that you're not tapping into right now. You will be able to capture all that market rather than giving it away to another company that's banking on that. So I really feel like blockchain has is allowing brands for capturing that secondhand market in a very easily way. Of course, it should be like, collectible type of assets. It should not be any sort of assets. It should be people that, collectible that assets that people keep and use um, use as a collector, collectible. So I think that the people who are listening to this podcast realize why you are so excited and passionate about this topic. Definitely. As Web3, as Web3 can uh, definitely bring to luxury brand a way to solve a lot of challenges that are linked to the secondhand market. You've mentioned trust and authentication. You've mentioned logistic and storage and vaulting. You've mentioned even the business model and how to make money out of it. All of these questions, which of course are very complex and we need way more than just, a, uh, just one episode to, to go through all of them. Well, all those things can be solved by uh, leveraging the right solution in Web3, uh, including Courtyard. 
Um, and I, we really feel you know, your passion and your enthusiasm on this topic. How big of an impact do you see Web3 having on luxury uh, in general? And, of course, and maybe more particularly on secondhand program? Do you think it's going to be a game changer? Is it like a gimmick? What is your, give us a scale of how big this is going to have an impact. So when you look at the secondhand market uh, of those, it's, uh, it depends on the type of category, but like, uh, I would say it's about like 20, 20 to 30% of the total market uh, of, of a specific category. So it's, it's a massive opportunity. And I think we, we're really going to see something that will be positive from a consumer side, because I prefer that you, you mentioned Rolex. I prefer that my Rolex would be authenticated by Rolex when I buy it. And to make sure that it's a true, I would pay a premium for that. Um, so it's better for the consumer. Secondly, it's better for the brand because they are the one who really brought the, that asset to the market. So they are the one who really brought that value. But like once they sold that asset, the value is gone for them. Like they, they will not make money on that asset ever again. And other company are banking on that. So it's bringing back the value of the second hand and bringing back the value of that those brands created back to the brand rather than another type of company that would do it. Um, so I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of different types of um, luxury asset from the second hand standpoint. All right. So thanks a lot for all those insights, Nico. Uh, how can a brand reach out to you if anybody's interested in learning more about Web3 and NFT for luxury brand? Uh, definitely. Uh, they can uh, always contact us. Uh, I think it's uh, contact at courtyard.io or they can even reach out to me. Um, me my name is uh, Nicholas uh, without an H, French, French speaking. So without an H, Nicholas at courtyard.io. So uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm always available and we love to have those conversations. We love to see how we can help brand really get into the space the right way in a, in a meaningful way by creating those experiences. Um, we can provide as well everything from 3D modeling. So we have real life 3D modeling of those assets that we can do at scale. And I think that's something we haven't touched on. I truly believe that if you want to own something digital, it should look better than a picture. And so this is why we've invested a lot of um, a lot of like uh, resources to build those 3D modeling experience. Um, just because you want something that's cool that you want to post online that's digitally nicer than just a picture. Otherwise, I can just take a picture of my watch or my collectible and just have it in my phone. It should be better than that. And so that's why we, we're trying to bring this experience of digital um, digital asset. Thanks, everyone, for watching this episode of Pod Deluxe. And thanks a lot, Nico from Courtyard, for sharing with us all those insights. Thank you so much for having me. It was great, great having a conversation.